Good day, Paul here on Emu Mountain. And we're talking about the prophet Habakkuk, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And uh, here is a prophet with a difference. Normally a prophet would stand and deliver an edict from the Lord saying something like this. He'd say, thus says the Lord, if you don't repent, there's going to be big trouble. <laughs> but not this one. Habakkuk speaks out like one of us. Chapter 1, verse 2, he says, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounding. Verse 4, Therefore the law is paralysed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Then the Lord answers him, verse 5 of chapter 1, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. I'm raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honour. Now Habakkuk is writing this between 609 and 598 BC but he could be writing this today. It could be us speaking. How long, Lord, must I call for help and you do not listen? For four months now I've been struggling with some sort of disease like arthritis affecting both my hands and now my feet. And I've been crying out the same question. How long, Lord, must I call for help and you do not listen? And you must have had similar questions. I'm sure the thousands of people that are fleeing ISIS in the Middle East, in the New Babylonia, have also asked similar questions. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And then Habakkuk files a second complaint. Verse 13, he says, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. He's talking to God. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those who are more righteous than themselves? And Jesus asked the same question when he was on the cross. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And from chapter 2, the Lord answers. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. And this is so important for all of us to remember and to tell others. Get this revelation down, it says. Make it plain on iPad and on tablet, on YouTube clips and by proclamation. The end is coming. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It certainly will come and it will not delay and it will not prove false. Then he goes on to say in verse 4, See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Many Christians claim this word as the basis for their living here on earth. But some commentators see it as the Lord telling us that despite the Babylonians coming to destroy everything, as they did with their scorched earth policies, the righteous will live on into eternity by remaining faithful. 
The thousands of Christian martyrs in recent years needed to know this as they were butchered by the modern day Babylonians in ISIS. Remain faithful to the end and they will live on into glory. Isn't that amazing? Chapter 2 verse 12. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labour is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Unless the Lord builds the house, we labour in vain. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. By word of mouth, by YouTube, by Facebook, by whatever means he has provided, he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. As we hear his word and listen to it and, and take it on board and obey it, we become building stones in his temple for his glory. Chapter 3, Habakkuk goes on. Lord, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Here, Habakkuk is saying, it frightens me. Repeat them in our day, in our time. Make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. He's appealing for God's mercy. Verse 3, God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Verse 5, plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the age-old hills collapsed, but he marches on forever. Here we see a promise of Jesus coming again and the great tribulation. There will be tribulation and fearful times ahead. Then we have this amazing statement of faith and proclamation. Chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 and 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. After the Babylonians had dealt with a town or a country, there was nothing left. No fig trees, no vines, no olive trees, no crops, no sheep, no cattle and no survivors. Yet Habakkuk was going to rejoice in the Lord. And if we remain faithful till the end, that is where we will be. Rejoicing in the Lord. The just shall live on through faithfulness. Despite the devil's attempts to prevent me from walking with the arthritis in my hands and my feet, the Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. And when I leave this mortal body, this earthly tent, the heights will be with him in glory where I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. Hallelujah. So that's the book of Habakkuk. I promise you it's a great read. You get into it, read it several times until you fully understand it. It's a great promise. The Lord is coming back and the end is coming for all. So the next book we're going to study is the book of Zephaniah. So if you'd like to click on the button that's on the screen, it will take you there and you can come to the next book of the Old Testament, the prophet Zephaniah. In the meantime, from Emu Mountain, from my prayer mountain, 
You have a great day. We'll see you later.